LGBTI says it is disheartening that members of the organization are not allowed to exercise their rights to dignity, freedom and equality as provided for in the Namibian constitution. The thing is about respect, mutual respect for each other. Uh, we are not looking for special rights. We don't want the constitution to be amended or all of these things. But if we respect each other as human beings, and I think that is what leadership in this country should talk about, to say regardless of how the person appears or what they look like, we need to re re respect each other. We need to give the services that this person came for and not concentrate on how this person is expressing their gender or their sexual orientation. Dionzi Naris is a national coordinator for transgender, intersex and androgynous movement in Namibia. Some taxi drivers will get you into the car and then he drives about like a minute and then he takes one good look and then he says, no, bad luck, get out of my car, you know. And I smile about it, I laugh about it because I've processed it, but it's not a very nice feeling because then you get to Vernil Park, right, and then the taxi parks and the taxi rank. That walk from just the taxi rank into Vernil, the worst thing you could ever go through as a trans person, right? Because there's about God knows how many men there. They're shouting all these homophobic slurs at you. It's a shenge, it's morphe, it's very derogatory words. You know, people get physical, some push you around, some pull you around. According to a report by the Legal Assistance Center, homosexuality itself is not illegal in Namibia, but sodomy and certain other sexual acts between consenting adult males are considered criminal offenses. So, which brings us to our structural and policy level, where there are no protective laws in place for LGBT persons, generally. Um, I think for trans persons even worse because we deal with identity issues and not primarily body issues. So uh, we, our existence is completely nullified by the system because the system recognizes me as male, however I identify and express as female. However, Nari says some family members often take time to accept the status of LGBTI. What we don't do is transition with our families. Um, I always tell trans people it's very selfish and um, I guess I understand it because I'm this far in my journey. Other people will say, well, you know what, why do I have to be ap apologized for it? Because again, we, t we tell trans people to be unapologetic in their identity because they don't owe the world an explanation. But when you're looking at intimate family and partners, I would say take the time and transition with them. Accessing basic services without facing discrimination is another challenge. Definitely boils down to when you're accessing services that you really feel that you don't actually have the same rights as everybody else. So when you're to, when we as LGBT community talk about we are we don't have rights, it's not a thing of we don't have existing rights. It's a thing of exclusion, right? So when we are talking about non-discrimination, it would be nice to have you know in the constitution that non-discrimination clause to include sexual orientation and gender identity. They have something to contribute to this country. For those who are still, you know, uh, resorting to violate these people, I think it's time for us to understand and stop violating these people because they are also human beings like us. A 2015 report on gender advocacy project by the Legal Assistance Center states that prohibiting consensual sodomy and other sexual acts violates the rights of those individuals as provided for in the Namibian constitution. Salima Henok, NBC News, Vantuk.